before settlers arrived on the Fox River, Native Americans populated the area now known as Partyville. They traveled the Fox and Wisconsin rivers, trading with other tribes, collecting wild rice, and hunting the abundance of wildlife in the area. In 1828, Fort Winnebago was built, foreshadowing the coming of settlers to the region. 1840 brought a man named Willis W. Haskins, who clerked at Fort Winnebago. He served in this position until 1842, undoubtedly traveling the area surrounding the Fox River and what is now present-day Partyville. In 1846, Haskins worked a winter at the Cottage Inn in Milwaukee, where speculation has it that he met John S. Pardee, who was a Milwaukee merchant, and informed him of possible land speculation along the Fox River. By 1848, John Pardee hired agents to oversee his Fox River land holdings and established business operations, the beginning of Partyville. Reuben Stedman was sent by Pardee to build a store. Yates Ashley was sent to manage the properties. In 1849, they began construction of a large grist mill, this mill being completed in 1856. In 1850, Pardee and Haskin planted a portion of their lands for development in the area. Haskins had built the first log-framed house in 1848. It was known as the Lions Hotel, which we believe was across the way from the store and stagecoach stop. Haskins rented rooms and boarded horses for 30 years at this location. Many early settlers were arriving in the area to settle on their land grants. At this time, Gail Neath and Mike Haynes will talk about their families settling in the area. My name is Gail Neath. My family has been in the Partyville area for six generations, and I would like to share a bit of it. Our family arrived here two brothers from Buffalo, New York. In 1844, they settled in what is now Marcellin Township. They lived together for several years and then they both married in 1859. My great-great-grandfather established a homestead on what we is now our farmstead six generations and is still owned by the family. My grandfather, my great, my great grandfather and his brother both were in the Civil War. We have the records on them. We have some interesting letters sent back and forth by our great grandmother who was not pleased that she had been left with children and a farm to run while he was at war. Another side of the family, the Hoyts, came and settled in Partyville in 1846. We are told that they built the first house in Marcellin Township. They did not stay in the Partyville area very long. However, they married into a family by the name of Murray, who up until a number of years ago owned the farmstead, which is now lies behind um, the Bill Becker farm, which is north of Partyville. We have the written record of them coming from Honey Creek, Wisconsin, to the Partyville area. It was heavily wooded at that time. They crossed the Fox River, which runs just north of Partyville, and along the river was a low log building built by fur traders and was used by settlers to stay in. 
to put their cattle in for safety and to spend the night. According to the record, the next morning, the two Hoyt families traveled, one to their claim, which as I said is behind the Becker farm at this point, and the others to their claim, which was just across the river from what was originally Rhodey's sales and service on Highway 33. Of these farmsteads, only foundations are left. Rosetta Hoyt and her family were the ones that settled across from Rhodey's, married my great-grandfather, and in turn settled where we are now. Some interesting history on Rosetta. She was apparently an only child and tough woman. My great-grandfather came back from the war and he was never wounded, but he was never well. He'd gotten sick somewhere out east and he, he sired two more sons, which was my grandfather and his brother, and then died when they were 11 and eight, and she remarried a Mr. Fuller, whose wife and her sister were the only survivors of an Indian attack, which we have the written accord, or the written story by her. Interesting part of this is that he divorced, Mr. Fuller divorced his wife, which was unheard of before the turn of the century and married Rosetta, who was a widow, and they were told were shunned in part by the community. But she didn't care, <laughs> or she didn't let it bother her. Anyway, that's family, that's family history. We are the caretakers of the original grist mill, which I remember right, was built in 1856. My grandfather, Henry, moved into town when my parents took over the farm in 1947. And he was, as we say, a dumpster diver. He was always collecting. And he took care of Mrs. Chandler, Dr. Chandler's widow, took care of her lawn, her garden, and her barn. And in the barn were stored the original drive wheels for the grist mill. She wanted them destroyed. So while he didn't destroy them, he built a building onto his barn on North Main and stored them there for about 40 years. And we tore the barn down, we found them. And unfortunately, two of the larger ones were rotted on the bottom and had we had any th thought, we would have kept them anyway. But we saved the ones that are complete and they're stored in the family barn on the farmstead now. One is, we're told, is the main drive off of the paddle wheel, and it was rope driven. It's solid maple and it's inlaid with oak because oak is stronger than maple and so the rope would not wear it out as fast. It stands probably seven feet tall. Um, amazing piece of workmanship. We had offered it to the museum, but it's too large for them to house or display. My grandmother, Henry's wife, in 1918, in the pandemic, was paralyzed. Now, we aren't sure that was because of the pandemic or it just happened, and we pieced that together she was paralyzed from the thighs down. She was pregnant at the time, lost the baby. My grandfather, Henry, um, mortgaged the farm and took her up to Minnesota, to Rochester, and they could do nothing. And then three or four years later, at age 37, she's pregnant again, gets pneumonia and dies. And the hard part was that Grandpa, it took him years to get past anger. He was just a very angry man. However, when I knew him, he'd moved back on the farm with us and he was, he'd lost the anger, but just, it affected the whole family.
Well, I guess first and foremost, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk briefly about our family and, and our settling around the Partyville area out on Haynes Road. You know, it's uh, been a lot of fun studying genealogy and finding out a lot of information. My great-great-grandfather, Robert Merrill Haynes, and his wife, Abigail Blaisdell, they moved west from the New Hampshire area approximately 1840 to 1843. You know, interestingly, our family had been in the New Hampshire area near Portsmouth since 1635. And that's when my seventh great-grandfather, Samuel Haynes, stepped off the ill-fated ship Angel Gabriel at Pemaquid Point, Maine during the Great Hurricane. And later that night, the ship was lost on the rocks to the hurricane. Moving west, we settled first in Honey Creek, Wisconsin. Interestingly, very near to Gail Neef's ancestors who also came from out east. Gail and I actually went down there to do some scouting based on old land records and found that both farms were but a few miles apart and know that our ancestors, well, they had to know each other. Well, documentation says that they found the ground very difficult to work and rocky. And first, Gilman Hoyt, which is Gail's ancestors, came to the Partyville area in 1848 and then my ancestors followed north to the Partyville area and settled on Haynes Road in 1849. You know what's cool is when you think about history, I imagine in my mind the family traveling north through what would become Partyville to the 293 acres of land including Haynes Hill and as they passed by, they were witnessing the completion of the Lions Hotel House in that same year. That's the same home that I now reside in on North Main Street 173 years later. <laughs>